the next episode of Land of Lost during our complete watch through. It will be follow that dinosaur. The big dinosaur fight we've all been waiting for. Stay tuned. Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition met the greatest earthquake ever known. High on the rapid, it struck their tiny raft and plunged them down a thousand feet below to the land. When I look all around, I can't believe the things I found. Now I need to find my way. I'm lost, I'm lost, find me. Living in the land of love. Living in the land of love. <laughs> Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition met the greatest earthquake ever known. High on the rapid, it struck their tiny raft and plunged them down a thousand feet below to the land. When I look all around, I can't believe the things I found. Now I need to find my way. I'm lost, I'm lost, find me. 
Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> here I am. Hi, everybody. Uh, Bill from Florida is here. He says, I'm on day six of cold flu, feeling better, but not yet. I've seen great day to watch. Yeah, it is a great day to watch. Not such a great day in Florida. Uh, did all of the uh, hurricane mess miss you? There have been two terrible hurricanes in the last two months. Caused terrible flooding um, in some parts of Florida. I hope... Uh, all of that missed you. Um, today, let me make my notes here. Follow that dinosaur. We're going to be watching episode 13 from season one of the original Land of the Lost. It's the episode called Follow That Dinosaur. It's uh, the episode that uh, includes um, this image right here. The thing that's happening in this image right here. Grumpy and Big Alice finally meeting. The one thing that every kid in the world wanted to see. <laughs> the big dinosaur showdown. Plus a lot more. Plus a much more interesting story than you would expect. Uh, Bill says we had a lot of wind where I am in St. Augustine. Some tree stuff. We'll have to get cut but nothing major. Some tree stuff. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I think everybody knows what you mean by tree stuff. Um, it's very cold here in uh, the Seattle area. It's been getting down to freezing every night this week, right at freezing. Um, there's no snow, no ice, but it's been <clears throat> but it's been getting right down to uh, freezing. And as I was going to bed last night, I was thinking to myself, as I was dropping off to sleep, I was thinking how awful it would be if there were a power outage. And then I opened my eyes shortly after 6 a.m. and Total darkness, the power was out. Um, so um, I stayed under the covers um, uh, for a while and waited for the power to come back on, and it didn't. So I, I switched my phone to uh, off of Wi Fi and switched it to uh, uh, cell data. And uh, the uh, power company up here has a live. Um, a power outage reporting uh, page that you can visit and I was able to visit that page on the phone and, and look at the map and see uh, where the power was out and there's just a little red dot right on top of the house that I'm living in <laughs> was on the map and marked as power outage and it said um, the power had been out for about an hour and the number of customers affected three <laughs> so it was just my house <laughs> Uh, Bill says he doesn't miss the cold. He used to live in Chicago. But uh, I made a report and uh, asked uh, and clicked a button on the page to have it send me text messages about uh, about updates. And then I, I bundled up and walked up to the, uh, the Starbucks about a quarter mile up the street and just hung out there. And uh, while I was there for... Uh, uh, an hour, 90 minutes, less than that actually, quite a bit less than that. Um, I got three text messages updating me. Um, and so they were very diligent about it. Um, at first, uh, so it was, it was just after six when I woke up. <coughs> when I first, uh, when I first got a, uh, a text update, it said, uh, estimate, uh, the estimate to repair time was 7.30 a.m., which was only like half an hour away. And I was like, oh, good. And then shortly after that, it was updated to 10 a.m., which would have been three hours away. So, oh, great. And then I decided I needed to go to Starbucks and hang out someplace warm. And, uh, and then while I was there, I got an estimate at 8.30. And by 8.15, they had it back on. So, um, and the, the guys, the guys in, in the in the trucks were on the street in front of the house and as I was walking out I waved at them and said thanks for working um, yeah it is nice to be able to have a company that's that communicative 
pen uh, that actually gets the job done. Um, that's the third time there's been a power outage. This was a minor power outage. It was very, very minor. There have been two major power outages while I've been up here. Both of them happened during uh, bad snowstorms. Uh, one of them took uh, a week uh, to get all repaired. But again, they kept us updated all the time. Uh, so, you know, so we couldn't be upset about it. I mean, uh, how could you? Okay, who's here? We got Bill here. Uh, Slap says, what's a snowstorm? <laughs> um, Slap is act asking, he's acting as if he doesn't have internet access. Um, I was watching one of my favorite uh, Twitch gamers playing uh, Fortnite earlier today. And some jerk was in uh, was in her chat insisting that he'd never heard of Elon Musk. So he didn't know who Elon Musk was. And uh, everyone was arguing with him. There was a big conversation going on. And I was like, he's lying. He's, he's, he's playing dumb. He's playing all of you. Stop arguing with him. That's, that's one of the things that actually makes me angriest when people come into a chat is when they come in and play dumb. Uh, saying rude things, uh, you know, th that's that's bad. That's You can ban people immediately. Uh, but someone comes in and starts playing dumb, that's one of the worst, most disruptive things that someone could do. And it really, um, it really upsets me when people uh, argue with them. And, uh, and, um, and actually try to explain to them what they're pretending they don't know. I mean, who, who the hell... I shouldn't even mention uh, the guy. I'm so sick of him. People, people are finally starting to understand what a what a bad guy he is. Um. Um. <clears throat> Slap says, "At least I'm in Florida, so there could be an iota of truth." So I say, "Yeah." <laughs> I was uh, walking home from the bus the other day, and I started seeing. I started seeing these these cards dropped on the uh, on the sidewalk among all the wet fall leaves over the course of uh, 20, 20 or 30 yards there were these four cards some some card game called Exploding Kittens which I've never heard of <clears throat> some kid dropped these out of his backpack on the way home from school or threw them threw them away I don't know what this game is, but I recognize the guy's art style. This guy was, uh, you recognize uh, his art style and that, that, that style of face that he's drawn there. He was one of the early successful um, um, uh, what do you call it, internet uh, uh, online comics creators. What's, what's the word for that? Um, online comics um, the word is escaping my mind. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna kill some more time. Wait for wait for other people to come in here. The last episode we watched was called um, "The Possession," uh, in which uh, at first Chaka was uh, web comic. Yes. Yeah, one, one of the first successful web comics. I can't think of the guy's name right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, he was one of the early successful web comics. Um, early 2000s. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, last episode, uh, The Possession, uh, in which uh, the three moons converged and the pylon opened up. A nearby pylon opened up and uh, Chaco was nearby, he saw it open, he wandered inside, he was hypnotized, he picked up a, a silver rod of some sort that was in there. Um, Bill says that one was unexpectedly good, it could have been silly. It was pretty good, but it wasn't uh, XKCD, I don't think it was XKCD, I could be wrong. Um, It might be. 
XKCD is okay. I'm I'm getting confused with who's who. Anyway, um, no XKCD is the the one with the stick figures that talk about science, right? This is not the same guy. Um, but anyway, uh, Chaka was hypnotized. He wandered to the high bluff and encountered Holly, and she grabbed the silver rod and uh, was hypnotized. She wandered into the, the lost city and started tapping the silver rod on the big crystals on the walls and it was sucking all the power out of them. <clears throat> um, Will could sense her, what she was going through somehow. He could sense her feelings, her thoughts. He, he could sense that she wasn't in control. He could sense that she needed to get back to the pylon. So him and dad went to the pylon and, um, some voice was coming through some booming voice coming out of the dark saying I am the greatest or whatever <laughs> and uh, so uh, Rick Marshall tossed all the, the gems off of the control table and uh, this, uh, this circular view screen popped up with a picture of an altrusion of a, uh, an ancient uh, uh, intelligent Sleestack who appeared to be frozen or dead and it was unexplained um, yeah and uh, we decided that uh, he must have been some altrusian supervillain like the master from Doctor Who if uh, if Enoch is, is the altrusian Doctor Who then this guy was the master and he's he's either been in suspended animation or he's or that's like a digital version of himself trapped in that pylon and somehow the uh, the convergence of the three moons allowed allowed him to uh, try to wake up yeah Dr. Evil Sleestack I think he would take umbrage at being called a Sleestack an altrusian I thought his dialogue was um, a little too silly. Uh, it didn't really fit his situation. But then, if you remember, um, one of the commentary tracks, um, uh, uh, what's his name? The, the guy, um, the, the, uh, the writer, uh, David Gerald. He said that the directors would change the dialogue during uh, during the videotaping, which he thought was he thought their changes were not uh, worthy of the scripts that, that were being written, and that may have been an example an example of what happened because David Gerald wrote this episode. It 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 was interesting. It it, uh, it allowed some conversation uh, on our part, but it doesn't have any impact on the rest of the series like at all which which is a bit frustrating because usually every episode adds something to the lore of the series okay I adjusted my uh, my microphone there for a second but um, yeah I thought as far as lore goes this, it was frustratingly empty um, the oatmeal. That's right. Slapped uh, Matt Inman. I, I believe you're right. That is the oatmeal. Yeah. Terrible artist. Rock bottom. One of the worst rock bottom artists I've ever seen. Yet somehow his uh, his stuff was super popular. Um. Apparently he made a. Uh, he lives on Bainbridge Island. That's, that's here in the Seattle area. Slap is telling me to go say hi. I will not be doing that. Um, apparently he made a, uh, a retail uh, card game called Exploding Kittens. Here's a card called the Hairy Potato Cat. This is a cat card and is powerless on its own. Play two hairy potato cats as a pair to steal a random card from another player. Uh, whatever. 
Okay. Bill says, even as a kid, the Enoch episodes were always the standouts for me. Me too. Same. Enoch was very important to me. Speaking of uh, retail games, I want to show you guys something I saw online. Walmart is uh, selling a uh, Hellraiser cube <laughs> as a uh, science toy for children. A replica of La Marchand's Lament configuration from Hellraiser. Um, here we are. <laughs> this is ability training, brain game. <laughs> and uh, someone from Fangoria, of all places, added. Uh, Added the reply, ah, the brain games, the sweet, sweet brain games. <laughs> What's the name of the guy who, who, uh, excuse me, the guy who developed uh, those movies? What's that guy's name? Yeah, if it actually functions, Bill, it would be enlightening. That would be one word for it. Um, what's the guy's name? Wes Craven, yeah. There's something wrong with that guy. There's something, something seriously wrong. It's not just an interesting entertainment that it's. It's not just interesting, entertaining horror films that he comes up with. It's. It's a fetish for him. It's obviously a fetish. Um. Anyway, we've been uh, Clive Barker. Clive Parker, okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. It is Clive, Clive. Wait a minute. Wes Craven and Clive Barker. Um, have they ever worked together? Okay, Slap is saying no Clive Barker, no Wes. Sorry. Well, make up your mind. <laughs> Wes Craven sounded right to me. Um, I, I could be wrong. Not a particular fan of those movies. I've seen the first one. I thought the the puzzle box itself was very interesting. In fact, I keep one right behind me. There it is, under glass. Because um, I like the way it looks. Uh, I'm not a particular fan of the movies. So which is it, guys? Is it Clyde Barker or Wes Craven? Speak up. The last time I did... Uh, one of these streams I was uh, transferring the uh, I was making a VHS transfer of the uh, Bigfoot and uh, Wild Boy shows and at the beginning once I had the VHS transfer software installed I wasn't sure no, it's Clive Barker not Wes Craven okay biography did an episode on Clive Barker before he admitted to being gay it was a very weird episode yeah I can imagine I, I remember um, reading, uh, even though I don't follow him, I remember reading when he came out as gay. So I saw a headline that says Wes Craven comes out as gay, or Clive Barker comes out as gay, and I was like, somehow that makes it worse <laughs> because it, it's obviously tied into the the fetish. This gore fetish is obviously tied into his sexuality somehow. That, that just made it worse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, um, uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh, when I was doing the uh, Bigfoot and Wild Boy thing, once since I installed the software while the, the show was live, I wasn't sure when I came back if, if I, had, I had been visible the whole time or if my microphone was still working. And I was asking people repeatedly, is my microphone working? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is my microphone working? Have, have I been on screen the whole time? I was asking repeatedly these questions and getting no response at all, even though there were three or four people uh, in the chat. And that's very frustrating. Um, I don't know what the problem was. Eventually, I mean, minutes, minutes later, quite a long time later, 
somebody else came in and said, yeah, your microphone's fine, you're, you're visible. And, and it wasn't, the, the people I'd been talking to originally just weren't responding. I, I, I don't know what the problem was. It's especially frustrating if I'm not sure that my microphone is broadcasting. <laughs> Um, okay, we need to get started. I'm waiting for more people to come in. There's usually more people. Uh, we've been uh, screwing around for 20 minutes here. Let me uh, let me get the disc out. Please. This is the first episode on disc three. It's called "Follow That Dinosaur." Come on. Oh, this is so frustrating when the, the, the DVD tray won't open. You're holding the button down, you're pressing the button, and it just doesn't do anything. Yeah, Maya is usually here. I'm waiting for Maya. Um, so let's talk about the other episode we watched uh, last time. It was called The Search. Uh, and this was the second appearance of Enoch. They, they had... Uh, the, uh, the marshals had mentioned Enoch a number of times since his first appearance, but we had we were actually we actually believed that he was gone. Turns out he's not gone. Turns out he's still struggling to uh, uh, make his uh, his time tunnel work, and um, they could hear him. They could they could hear him. Uh, there was some humming or rumbling sound. Which I found surprising. Um, uh, Rick Marshall was shocked when he combined red, blue, and yellow uh, crystals. Uh, Wesley went to... Uh, oh, I wrote down Wesley. I should say Will. <laughs> Will went to, went to go get Enoch, and while he was in there, Enoch's time door opened and he saw Earth. Uh, Chris is here. Hi, Chris. Good to see you. Um, this is the first time Chris is joining us for uh, a live Lands of Lost Watch through. This is going to be a good one, Chris. It's called Follow That Dinosaur. We're talking about the stuff that we watched uh, last time. Uh, Enoch uh, was reluctant to leave his cave and... Uh, help Rick Marshall but uh, Will Will saw Earth through the portal um, yeah everybody was overacting uh, <laughs> last time but every every uh, um, Chris says he's driving into work he's gonna leave the volume on while he drives okay whatever <laughs> um but Will saw Earth through the portal, but he refused to go through. And uh, my lights are flickering. Um, Enoch uh, felt that uh, Will was trying to shame him by making a sacrifice that uh, Enoch couldn't match, which, which was an interesting way of looking at uh, Altrusian society. So he went to save Rick Marshall. Okay. Hang on. I think the the plug is falling out of the back of the, the lamp. I'm going to look at it real quick. <clears throat> okay, that helped. Uh... All right, um, so we know that the time doorways work. We know that they can find Earth. Uh, Enoch doesn't know the time-space coordinates, um, and that's been the problem up to now. And we talked about how we, we all kind of agreed that, uh, that the marshals should have some sort of agreement that if... Uh, they ever see Earth through a time doorway again to, to just go 
and uh, and leave like like drop a, a red cloth or something at the point which they uh, which they jump through to let the others know that that they uh, made it back. Um, that's the kind of thing that uh, I would insist on agreeing on if, if we were if I was stuck in that situation. Uh, anyway, um, we're coming up on 4:30. Let's get on with it. Let's get into uh, the TV room. Here we are. Follow that dinosaur, episode 13. Um, I think we'll save Stone Soup and Elsewind to next time. Definitely we'll save Elsewind to next time. I think we should save Stone Soup too. It's not a particularly interesting episode. At least I didn't think it was. But... Uh, Uh, Bill says, I wonder if that type of agreement would have flown with the network given it's a children's show. I don't know. That seems to me like the kind of thing that the science fiction authors would have would have been able to push through. Um, speaking of uh, episodes that might be appropriate for kids, story elements that might be appropriate for kids, wait till you see what we're, we're going to watch today. <laughs> Just wait. We showed this episode on uh, Bad Saturday Morning. And... Uh, talked about it at length it uh, really blew our minds well let's uh let's press play Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition met the greatest there we go. ever known high on the rapids it struck their tiny raft That final moment of the theme song is so is so perfect. Written by Dick Morgan. We really don't know anything about Dick Morgan. But right, Bill, I think he's talking about Elsewind. I think you were the, the person who, who requested Elsewind on the Bad Saturday Morning Show. Quick, Will, get the fly swat. <laughs> I mean, Grumpy's getting tired of eating oversized toothpicks. What a thing to wake up to. I was having the nicest dream, too. Look, he's torn our curtain. Oh. Oh. Now what are we going to use to keep the flies out? Well, we're just going to have to hang it back up, that's all. I don't think so, Dad. Look, he's eating some of it. Eating some of it? Wait a minute. Grumpy's a meat eater. Well, somebody better tell him that. I mean, he's just eaten half our curtain. I think I know why, Dad. Why, Holly? Well, the curtain we hung up is made out of dinosaur nip. Dinosaur, dinosaur nip? nip. <laughs> well, that's what I call it. Well, why do you call it that? All together now. Dinosaur well, the nip. The other day, I saw Spot playing with it, and it reminded me of a cat playing with a catnip mouth. Well, maybe that explains why he's been so attentive towards us. <laughs> why? Attentive? <laughs> well, there's so much dinosaur nip around High Bluff here. Well... That's the only reason he's coming around, then. Why don't we pick it all up and throw it in the crevasse? And maybe old Grumpy will jump right in after it. And then we can all get some sleep. Holly. Well, no, no, that wasn't really the greatest idea I've thought of. Oh, no, I think that was a great idea. In fact, uh, we'll clear away all the dinosaur nip from around here, and then Grumpy won't bother us anymore. In fact, we'll start right after breakfast. <laughs> You and your big <laughs> mouth. Well... <laughs> 
<clears throat> Look what you got us into. Well, at least Daddy isn't making us do it ourselves. <clears throat> and I was gonna go fishing today. Well, the fish will be there tomorrow. There's nobody else here to catch them. Well, here's some more. You know something? <sighs> you two are doing a great job. Oh, thank you, Daddy. Will, can I give you a hand with that? Uh, no thanks, Dad. They're not heavy. Well, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Boy, they sure do smell when you get a lot together. Yes, they do. I want you both to keep an eye out for Grumpy and his friends. If you're sure that you can handle this patch, I'm gonna take care of the one south of the cave. Grumpy and his friends? Well, I can handle mine. Yeah, we'll be okay, Dad. All right, but remember, be careful. You know, what do you think you're doing? You know you can't carry as much as I can. I can, too. Oh, come on, it's too heavy. You'll hurt yourself. I can carry anything you can carry. Holly, you're a girl. Good observation. <laughs> Girls can do anything boys can do. Have it your way. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, Bill, um, uh, DC Fontana did write Elswin. She also wrote Yesteryear. <laughs> and uh, until you pointed it out, I, I didn't make that connection. It's the same story. If you're tired, just say so. No, I rest when you rest. Come on. Well, I'm not tired. Oh. Okay, let's go. Come on. <sighs> These things sure stink. <sighs> this is some music we haven't heard before. It's silly Holly screwing up music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Careful not to fall over the edge. Don't worry, I don't plan to. Come on, let's throw these over and get back to the cave. Uh. Come on. <laughs> Tired? No, only if you are. Well, I are. Come on, let's rest by those rocks. Okay. <sighs> oh. Oh. Smell those ferns from here. Yeah, me too. Hey, Holly. What? Look! What do you think it is? Looks like a man. It is a man. Oh. Is he dead? I don't know. Hey, it's a dummy! A dummy? What's a dummy doing here? What's important is who put it here. Come on, let's get it out of here and take a look at it. He sure had short legs. Oh, I think they're knickers. What are knickers? They're pants that came down to here, and they wore socks from here on down. <laughs> you know, you've seen them in the old movies on TV. Pants that came down to here, and then Smells he points like at the dummy instead there. of his own knee. Yeah, whoever made it must have stuffed him with the ferns. Hey, look, there's something in his pocket. the dinosaur nip. Come on, quick, behind the rocks. <laughs> Rick Marshall's super hearing. <laughs> Forgot the dummy. Run for the rocks, I'll get the dummy. Will. Hurry, before they stop yelling at each other and decide to play with us. Don't worry, I'll be okay. Go! You still don't remember this one, Bill? What does it say? I don't know. Grumpy and Alice came before we had a chance to look at it. Well, they should both be at it for a while. Come on. Let's get this back to High Bluff and take a look. Okay. Come on. What kind of book is it, Dad? No 
It looks to me to be some kind of a journal or a diary. I can hardly read the writing. Wait a minute. Listen to this. <laughs> I finally managed to teach the little furry monkey people a few words of the Christian language. I call them terrible lizard creatures, the Sleestacks, after Major Joshua Sleestack. But, but them little fellas say Sarisa Taka, or, or something akin. Hey, then he must be the one who wrote the warning about the Sleestack on the pillar Sleestack. outside the lost city. Them giant thundering beasts won't give us a moment's peace. Dad, giant? he said us. There's got to be two of them. Giant thundering beasts, he There's said us. There's some kind of plant the giant beasts like. He must mean dinosaur nip. Apparently. Let's see, it goes on here. Harry Potts has been gone for days now. Harry Potts must be the name of the other guy. I've taken off me clothes, stuffed them with that funny green stuff that monsters take so much delight in. And I've built me a roaring fire. I'll put me dummy in plain sight by the fire so that those infernal creatures will be thinking it's me. They'll not come close till the fire dies down. And by then, I should be across the crevice and into the cave where the pillars end. That's the lost city. Is there any more? It's just a little bit here. If I be right, fear not ye poor suffering stranger a reading this. I leave ye clues on rocks and on paper as I have already done in me hand with this. That's it. The other section is missing. Hey, the other half must be in the lost city. Dad, what do you think it meant when it said Harry Potts has been gone for days now? Gone where? I don't know, Holly. Do you think it could have meant Harry Potts escaped from here? Well, there's only one way to find out. Yeah, find the other half of the diary in the lost city. Yeah, but the sleigh stack. This is the dormant season. Oh, I thought it was over. Well, it's almost over, but I think we'll be OK. Well, then what are we waiting for? Well, let's get rid of this dummy on our way. Otherwise, we'll have to fumigate the cave when we get back. Yeah. yeah. I remember seeing this one. It was when it originally aired. I was, I was freaking out. I, I was absolutely electrified. Hey, Dad, look, Grumpy's following us. Don't worry, he'll stop when he gets to the crevasse. Let's go. They were lucky it wasn't written in Portuguese or uh, Icelandic or something. <laughs> hey, look, Grumpy's still trying to follow us. It still doesn't ring a bell, Bill? Believe it. He's coming across the crevasse. Oh, Big Alice isn't going to like that. Yeah, Big Alice isn't going to like Come it. Come on. Let's get to the Lost City before he gets across. I love the fact that they combined the big dinosaur battle that we've been waiting on so long with a really good plot. Dad, where'd the diary say he was going? Well, he said that he was going to the cave where the pillars end. But there are three entrances to the lost city. Which one did he mean? Well, we know it's not the main entrance in the center, honey, because that leads to Enix Place and the Sleestack Pit. Well, maybe it's this one here. No, I don't think so, son. He probably would have told us about the fallen pillars. No, I think he was talking about the one on the far side. It's Grumpy! And Alice! Come on. Quick, behind the pillars, we'll be safe there. See, when you watch the series from the beginning, you know that Grumpy has never been here before. And this is shocking. This is all new animation. This is not reused from anything else. Look at that background painting, my God. Hi, Ivory. Here we go. You missed quite a bit. You got here just in time to see the big fight. Being stepped on. Wow. 
So they're they're right in there. They're right in that crack. Apparently they haven't thoroughly explored the cave on the far end. <clears throat> They're really going at it. Now they'll get tired after a while if they don't kill each other first. Hey, I wonder if this is a cave the diary talked about. It must be. Look at that. Hey, it's just like the one on the pillar out in the jungle. Yeah, he definitely came this way. Come on, let's see where this tunnel in goes. In case you missed that line, Ivory, they found a diary. And while, when they ran across the crevasse, Grumpy actually actually followed them and made it across the crevasse. Grumpy's never been in front of the Lost City before. Any measly stacks here? I don't think so, honey. Not unless it suddenly gets warmer. And this answers yeah, the, the question. This cold, the sleigh stacks remain dormant. <clears throat> Look, Dad, there's something down there. This answers the question of who Let's wrote who wrote the, the words Beware of Sleestack out in the jungle in front of the Lost City. It looks like somebody else has been here before us. Yeah, look at these gourds and that blanket. Huh, they look like they've been here a long time. What are those? Rocks to throw at a Sleestack? No, honey. This is a Karen. A what? It's a form of a landmark. It's a sign to look here. It means there's something probably it's, underneath. This is where I learned the word Karen. Mm, it's cold here. No, I'm not complaining. It's just fine. Yeah, Bill, that's a good question. Why didn't they bring crystals? After that incident with hey, Dad oh, getting shocked, they might Dad. be wary of crystals. It's the other half of the diary. Oh, there's a map here. And what does it say? More writing. There's a map. I've finally found Harry Potts trail. He come here, but he not come out. I can feel it in me bones. There's a hole down there among them dead lizard men. It must mean the dorm at sleep stack. That hole leads straight back to New England. <laughs> Harry Potts went in that hole and he went home. <laughs> <laughs> Take heart, stranger. I leave you this map. I go to follow my best chum, Harry Potts. Dad, do you oh, think he got out? Well, I don't know, Will, but he certainly didn't come back here. Well, where's the map say the hole is? Let me check here. Okay, Will. Wait a minute. Uh, Rick. Looks like we're supposed to go this way. Do you think it's the way out, Dad? Well, I don't know, Holly, but let's find Come out. On. <laughs> Shh, quiet. Wow, this is a serious fight. Ah! Well, it's okay, honey. They're still dormant. Yeah, I'd be happy if they'd never wake up. Come on, let's go. Uh, the sleep sacks are in their dormant season. That's why they didn't bring uh, crystals. Okay, we're reminded once again that there are spiders in, in this dimension. Still looking at the map. Okay. What was that? Oh, I think I kicked a rock or something. I think I kicked a rock or something. Okay. I guess the idea is that there are just hundreds and hundreds of police acts here, even though there are only three actors. Now we're supposed to look for an arrow. Like this? Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Wow. The arrow points the hole in the wall. Hey, that must be it, the hole he wrote about. Well, we've come this far. All right, now I'm going to go first. Holly, I want you to follow second. And Will, keep your eye on the rear. Okay. Sure, it's small. Well, we're just going to have to crawl through it. 
Come on. To the diary. What does it say? Lava. Look out. Lava. Wait a minute. I don't like this. That lava's beginning to rise. Hey, do you think it'll get this high? I don't think so, Will. It doesn't look like it's done it in the past. It's getting a lot warmer, though. It feels pretty good. Sleep stack. This is probably what brings them out of their dormancies. Uh oh. Come on, we've got to get out of here. Hurry! Move. Hurry! Come on, we'll go! Hurry! We pushed Holly through Quick. first. <laughs> Ivory lava is always a problem. The slee stacks are like, ugh. Uh, morning breath. Ugh. They're waking up. Quick. Move. Quick. Come on. Move. Hurry. Come on, Holly. Hurry. Okay. Back through here. And back out here. Well, if it's, if it's not a horde of slee stacks, it's fighting dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Ah, uh, more collapsed pillars. Will, you still have the crystals? Yeah, Dad. Oh, they do have the crystals. On the count of three, we'll throw them together. One, two, three! That actually works. Okay. End of dinosaur fight. Dad, we didn't read the last half of the journal yet. I know. Yeah. I've been putting it off. Kind of don't want to read it. Dear poor unfortunate stranger, if ye be reading this by now, you know, this is not the way out of this miserable, God-forsaken land. Go back. Leave these crawly caves. The slee stack awaken when the devil's cauldron bubbles up. I've stayed too long. They are awaiting for me to come out. Wherever me chum Harry Potts is, in heaven or hell, I'm hoping that he'll put in a good word for me when I get there. At least, I'll be out of here. Peter Koenig, the private in General Washington's Revolutionary Army. The end. Lower curtain. Brilliant. Brilliant. Not your ordinary children's program writing. Okay, let's talk about this. <clears throat> This, uh, after I saw this as a kid, 
this story has never left my mind. It, I think about it constantly. These two guys, this is only the second time they've encountered evidence of other humans in uh, the land of Lost. The, one of their earliest episodes, they encountered that old prospector down underground, and he was so unpleasant, they didn't feel any need to try to team up with him or work with him. They encountered that one sleestack named Salach, who told them that there have been many humans come through the land of the lost, and he said they either they either die or they disappear. But this is the first time we've seen any artifacts or evidence of other humans actually uh, appearing in the land of the lost, and these two guys died here. Uh, Bill says, apropos of nothing, I thought Will and Holly's acting was better in this episode. It was perfectly apropos, not apropos of nothing. Um, so uh, Chris says that was solid, even if he didn't have visuals until the dino fight. Yeah, and a great ending. Um, Ivory says, I would love it if the series were, was restarted, um, but not modernized. Yeah, that, that's hard to do, though. Uh, um yeah, Chris says, I'd generally be worried that they screw up the charm if they if they remade it. They tried that in the 1990s, and it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. They got the best uh, stop-motion animators in the world to do the dinosaurs for that show, and it, and it was still terrible. Um, we don't even talk about that, <laughs> that series. And then there was that awful movie, which I've not seen. Um, yeah, Bill says, pretty dark ending for a kid's show. But see, kid's show writing... The, the idea of kids' show writing doesn't apply to this show. This was written by science fiction authors, serious science fiction authors. They obviously... Um, David Gerald and Dick Morgan obviously got this through uh, the network by... They probably added lots of other stuff that was way... That was so over the top that the, that the network would get to the network people would get fixated on those things which they which they were glad to remove and then be left with a really good uh, plot and the way the thing ended with them reading the end of the diary and no comment no other comment no extra comments of of, of holly saying gosh dad or, or <laughs> i hope i hope that doesn't happen to us dad what are we gonna do dad no just no comment no comment at all um, that was gripping all the way through and it included the most epic dinosaur fight ever seen on Saturday morning television <laughs> I do wish the, the dinosaur fight had ended some other way because um, we've seen we've seen other dinosaurs get killed we've seen uh, Grumpy actually ate Spot he actually killed and ate Spot <laughs> a few episodes ago uh uh, yeah, I read the diary, the looks on their faces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finding a... Uh, and Holly's reactions. When uh, when they first saw the, the, the clothes stuffed full of weeds, um, first Holly, Holly, Holly said, Hey, what's that? And, and Will said, I think it's a man. And Holly turned away. She was like, No, no. And, and then... Um, at the end, she was the first one to see the skeletons, and she did it again. She turned away. Um, it was really, uh, it was really effective. Very sad, very tragic. Keep in mind, this, we're learning more about the land of the lost. Again, like like Salach told us, there are other humans. Enoch is quite familiar with humans. He seems to be quite familiar with humans. Uh, Salach told us humans come here; they either die or disappear. And now we've seen evidence. These two guys from the 1770s from uh, America New England 1770s they died here and we didn't just we didn't just read about it in the diary we saw their bodies we saw their, their bones <laughs> yeah this you can see why this stuck with me um, for all these all these decades it's been fresh on my mind ever since uh, Chris says, to be fair, it's not Land of the Found. Yeah, right. We need to talk of, about uh, uh, the old school Land of the Lost from the 1940s sometime. Uh, there, was a, there was a novel written by a woman called Land of the Lost about 
two kids who catch a uh, who catch a fish from the deep ocean. His name is Red Lantern, and he talks to them, and he tells them that he comes from the land of the lost, where everything that people lose ends up. And he takes them down to the bottom of the ocean, that's for socks and keys, and um, <laughs> and they have all sorts of adventures down there. Uh, it was a radio program that ran for like ten years. Uh, and um, uh, Paramount Famous Studios, uh, the uh, the animation studio that was made that was put together from the remains of the Fleischer Studio animation, the ones making the Betty Boop and the Popeye cartoons, they made some uh, they made some Red Lantern, Land of the Lost cartoons, some animated cartoons. Um, Ivory says she remembers it now. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was surprised when I discovered that there was an old 1940s Land of the Lost. I, I discovered that a few years ago. Anyway, boy, plenty to talk about. So there was there was a whole section of the Lost City that they had not explored yet. I guess which makes some kind of sense. Uh, but then we also learned that the Sleestacks have a dormant season. Uh, so they could have been exploring spending that whole season exploring the whole thing but then if the lost city really is a city if it's the size of uh, uh, if it's the size of uh, Cincinnati or something down under there <laughs> then, then how would you explore the whole thing um, I saw another one of the the gamers that I watch on twitch uh, a couple of weeks ago she was showing some slides some pictures I said slides <laughs> she was showing some photos that she took when uh, she and her friends visited Pompeii in uh, Italy uh, just a, a, a couple of months ago and she was saying the thing that first struck her was that you, you, you read articles about Pompeii all the time and you get the idea that it's an archaeological site it's just this one little spot and, and she said as we were walking around you, you start to understand that this was a city. This is a city we're walking through. It's in ruins, but it's a city. She said, there's no way you could see all of it. There's no way you could explore all of it. And I, I'd never heard anyone put it that way before. And, and, and I was like, okay, that's why I keep seeing articles saying new so-and-so discovered at Pompeii. Because it's, it's, a, it's a city. And a great deal of it is underground. Or it is now. And Chris says, yeah, I've never even heard of the 1940s versions. This is the first time I've ever heard about it right now. Well, mine is blown again. And uh, Chris says, yes, it's huge. Have you been there? Have you been to Pompeii? I always think of ancient, ancient quote unquote cities as being, you know, villages. Like, like uh, you know, little one street, uh, one main street to one crossroads. You know, a, a, a general store and a and a tavern. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I forget that these were cities with with a hundred thousand people in them, tens of thousands at least, hundred thousand. Even even exploring a small a small town like. Woodville, Texas, where I grew up, or Livingston, Texas, which was uh, 30 or 40 miles away. Livingston only has um, uh, like 15,000 people in it, or something like that. 15, 20,000 people. You would, if it were abandoned and your, your task was to explore everything, you, you couldn't do it. Uh, Chris says, no, I have a friend who did. He brought a camera and recorded the whole thing. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, as uh, as awesome as this episode was, as well made as it was, it, it was a one a one story thing, and it was pretty straightforward. And there's not that much else uh, to discuss other than being thoroughly impressed with it. Ivory says, "I've not been. I watched a documentary about a loaf of bread found in a closed oven." Okay, and they were able to recreate it. Barley flour, yeast, grape skins. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I guess a city that size, discoveries like that would just be endless. 
Um, but yeah, that's what, a, what an experience uh, this show was. For uh, a 10 year old kid like me, it was, uh, I, I was just eating it up. Who, who, someone who had avidly watched the uh, Star Trek cartoon and was hungry for more real science fiction. This comes along and wow, I was just, I was just thunderstruck by it. All right, so next time, and and the way, the, the way it calls, it calls back to the first episode or the second episode, yeah, it's the second episode, when they first saw the graffiti that says beware of Sleesack on it. This explains that. Um, and D I remember David Gerald commenting that the guy who wrote that episode included that graffiti Beware of Sleek without explanation. And David Gerald was like, okay, we have to come up with a reason for this. Yeah, Chris says a lot of today's science fiction is science fantasy. Um, uh, Iris says most of this I'm seeing for the first time and, and uh, enjoying it, I'm sure, as much as a kid. Yeah, um, I was I was a huge fan of Saturday morning. Saturday morning was basically my religion when I was little. So I was already hooked on Saturday morning. And then to have good science fiction start appearing on Saturday morning, I couldn't get enough of it. And this is not just not just okay science fiction. This is excellent science fiction. <laughs> this is excellent science fiction. Right, and, and the name Sleestack being a guy from Washington's Army. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody Google that. See if it's an actual, uh, if it's an actual family name. But somehow I, I suspect not. But he named them after the, their, their sergeant, or their, their commanding officer. Man, Washington's Revolutionary Army. What a pl what an unpleasant, uh, what an unpleasant thing to be involved in. Um, and then to end up in the land of the lost. How the hell did they end up in the land of the lost? <laughs> they didn't fall down a waterfall. Yeah, they didn't fall down a canyon. How how did they do it? Were they just running through the woods? <laughs> what the hell happened? They were running through the woods and suddenly there's a dinosaur? What? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, next uh, next episode, which maybe it'll be either next Tuesday or next Thursday. I'm not sure. We'll watch episode 14 called Stone Soup, which is a, a simple little standalone episode. And then we'll watch episode 15 called uh, Else When which uh, was written by DC Fontana. And there'll be plenty to talk about after that. Okay, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, I should have, there's a PayPal link uh, on the screen. In the description of the video, there should be a link to uh, my coffee page where you can make, uh, you can make contributions if you like. Um, I will happily accept uh, donations. Um, there was a, uh, there's a sale on eBay uh, by some guy yeah it'll be sometime next week uh, Irie. some guy on eBay is selling a VHS tape that he made back in the day of uh, episodes of Bigfoot and Wild Boy and I, I posted a comment about it here on the YouTube channel and uh, said should I buy it and Chris said sure yeah absolutely buy it and I'm like okay if, if I get if I get 20 bucks in donations I'll buy it because it'll, it'll cost like $25 to order the thing Chris says, thanks tons. Thank you, Chris, for being here. Um, and get to work. Don't let us, uh, don't let me distract you. All right. Uh, see you all next week. Bye. Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition met the greatest earthquake Ever know High on the rapids It struck their tiny raft And plunged them down A thousand feet below To the land Of the
Bakuni.